Hey, I'm Jason Chapman, and I run a music store with my brothers, John and Jeremy. People are always asking, what is it like to be in a family business? Well, I've been in a band with my family for the last 28 years. And if that wasn't enough, we recently opened a music shop. Since opening the shop, we found that the people that come through the door are just about as unique as the instruments they carry. And now, since they gave us a TV show, we leave the cameras running, and there's always something going on at the shop. And welcome back to another episode of the Ozark Music Shop. I've been practicing. That. I, I feel like I feel like we're watching. That's it. The, the, Press the one. Actor shop. Press one for more options. <laughs> Press Th two. You know what? This, for Espanol. This episode really struck a chord with me. Oh! No! Get it? Yeah, Larry no, Cardo. They get Larry Cardo. They get call it. him the Cord. They do. Yeah. Cord. The hey, Cord. The, the mighty cord. cord. That's right. Larry Cordo is on the episode with you tonight. It's Super nice. Let's try an experiment. Name a country song. He wrote it. Name another one. <laughs> Again, he, no, not that one. Yes, he wrote it. See, pretty much every country song you can pretty name, much, yes. he wrote it. <laughs> he wrote it. Yeah. yeah. That's Larry, pretty awesome. This guy is such a great songwriter. He is he's legendary like, songwriter. Legendary, yes, like there, There's tiers of songwriter, and he's above the top tier, I believe. And wow. all around nice guy. Yes, so That's the great part about it. He's storyteller. He's famous, but he's a great storyteller. Um, written some of the most famous songs that you can think of. Murder on uh, Music Row, Murder Highway 40 Blues. I, oh my gosh. You know them all. <laughs> I know those two. <laughs> those two. <laughs> no, he's written so many songs. And he's, he plays a few of them that are, are newer songs from a new project you're working on. Yeah. I know you guys are going to love it. It's the Larry Cordell. The Cord. The Cord. The Larry. <laughs> Up before the rooster crows In his old bib door Cup of coffee, black and strong While he puts his work shoes on He'll feed his mules and milk them cows He's got fields he has to plow So begins another day in the life The Farmer A never-ending old routine Watch the sky and pray for rain It's a struggle every day But he has faith and don't complain It's who he is and what he loves And I know that God above Used a lot of special dust when he made the farm. A callous handshake is his word. Good as gold, so I've heard. On his knees, he makes a stand. His legacy is in the land. It's not for fortune, not for fame. You'll likely never know his name. With honest sweat, he feeds the world. That's why God made. A never-ending old routine Watch the sky and pray for rain It's a struggle every day But he has faith and don't complain It's who he is and what he loves And I know that God above Used a lot of special dust when he made the farm. It's who he is and what he loves, 
And I know that God above Used a lot of special dust When he made the farmer Welcome back. We are here with the Mighty Chord. That's, I think that is the official title for you. You're the Mighty Chord. Not the little chord. <laughs> the Mighty Chord. <laughs> no, Larry Chord is the power chord. He is the power chord. <laughs> Bird Burton gave me that name. Did he? You know power that? I did not know that. Yeah, he was a. I'm going to claim I did it. Good soul. <laughs> you guys saw it. <laughs> he did it for a joke and it just kind of stuck, so. I like it. <laughs> I've had it all these years. Larry is one of the, to me, the most amazing songwriters I've ever oh, known. Thanks, and John. You too. What kind. has always been the best part about knowing you is you've had so many hits, yet you have always been one of the nicest guys to sit and talk with and be around. And you were extremely nice to us as, as upstarts in the uh, music end. And first time I met you, you were just so supportive and so wonderful about it. And we do appreciate that. And I know. Everybody out there that knows Larry knows that that is the case. So thank you first and foremost for that. Uh, you're welcome. We need people to play like you fellas. <laughs> I can tell you that no, you right don't. now. That is not true <laughs> yes, at all. Yes, we do too. But you have been. You've been <clears throat> writing songs now for, well, how long now? Well, I came here in 85. And uh, actually, I had the first record. The first record I had was 1983. It was Highway 40 Blues. And, uh, Never heard of that song. <laughs> uh, you know, me, me and Ricky were raised about a mile apart, and so um, I always knew Ricky was going to be a big star. I didn't think I was going to get to work in the industry. I just frankly wasn't, I didn't have the stuff that him, him and Keith had, but uh, God gave me another little thing I could do, you know, and I didn't even know it until I was in my middle 20s that I knew how to write songs. Had you so, written much before no, Highway 40? Now, I wrote one song that I can remember when I was about 14 with my cousin who lived, a distant cousin of mine who lived inside of my house. And I, I, he wanted to do that. I wasn't even really interested in anything like that. I was interested in the guitar, but, you know, I, I broke my hand when I was nine and I couldn't turn my hand over. So it, it kind of, I probably wouldn't have been no good anyway, but... <laughs> But it kept me from reaching backwards, and uh, sometimes my little finger and this finger won't do what my brain tells it to do. So I just Mine have to too, take whatever. I was going to say, I, I don't have the excuse for that. that. <laughs> but it, if that was your first big hit, you had to have been going, wow, this songwriting thing is pretty easy. <laughs> well, no, I had a few songs. You know, I just didn't have... Um, Ricky had made a record, uh, well, <laughs> really was just kind of demos on me in 1980, and uh, I was trying to be a CPA during the day, and... And I wasn't gonna be very good at that, so uh, he made a little record. Tell your clients that, did you? Uh, no, <laughs> at Limco in Lexington, you know, and it had Highway 40 Blues and Hero of the Creek, and I don't know some other things. Two highways was on there. Some things that Ricky wound up doing, and uh, he told me then, you know, he was gonna record something of mine if he got a bigger deal, and I figured that was a matter of time. I didn't, I didn't know. Well, that started a huge relationship because there was a lot of, there was a string of hits that Ricky recorded of yours. They quite a bit. Well, yeah, I was on a bunch of them records early on, you know, and then uh, even till after he went to Atlantic, I was still on some of those records, you know. Yeah, me and Ricky were, you know, I've known Ricky all his life, so we were lifelong friends and still are. We just don't see one another much anymore, you know. Well. Yeah. To be honest, you're both busy now, and you're still writing a ton of hit songs. I've been well, I'm not doing just, the best I can. <laughs> not just, and, and then also having a career of your own as a singer and player, too. So we've had you out with multiple different groupings. I remember talking to you. You are talking to me at one time about even being in a rock band for a while, a long back. Uh, I, uh, well, when I was in college, that's how I really kind of got to wanting to really play professionally. You know, that's really what I wanted to do. 
I wanted to be Dwayne Allman or something. <laughs> I figured out I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> I wasn't going to be very good at that either. <laughs> I tried I, hard. I, I just want Life kept steering him towards writing songs. I just want like. everybody that knows Larry to think of him being doing his rock star moves and, and <laughs> being out on stage. I could, Power chord. It's just, yeah. <laughs> I had a band called Hot Lucy Boys, and I'm telling you, it was a hot band too. <laughs> You guys, if you haven't looked up uh, Larry Cordell's career, there's been string after string of great hit songs, and they've continued to go. You had a big, big song called Murder on Music Row. I did. That was another really big one. Um, so, I mean, how many uh, of them fancy gold platinum award stuff do you have at the house? I, I gave most of them away, you know, because... Um, I was fortunate enough to get inducted into the Kentucky Music Hall of Fame in 2015, and, and I gave most of them away. I don't really know. We've got a few left around out there, you know. While I had offices in town, it was really great to have all that stuff hanging around because when people came came in to see you, it looked like you at least knew what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. If you didn't know who Larry was, then you shouldn't have been trying to get rid of his song. That's all I knew. <laughs> well, I, I think you've had a wonderful career. I found you to be one of the nicest guys. I, I have another fun story. I remember sitting with Larry one time and we were just sitting on the bus and uh, he goes, excuse me guys, I got to take this call. And he comes back. He goes, that was Garth Brooks. Uh, I'm thinking about having him come in and sing on one of my uh, projects coming up here. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I know. It was totally true. Actually. And I'm sitting here looking at him like, why are you hanging out with me if like, Garth <laughs> Brooks is calling you on the phone, on your cell phone? I wonder why you're hanging out with you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you know, Garth to tell you this, too. I remember when he was just a club singer in Oklahoma when he met the first time I met him, you know. And, I mean, you just don't know what people are doing take a shine to, you know, I mean, and he had such a great career, and, uh, you know, I've accused him from time to time of being a bluegrass or somewhere down in his heart. I know he wants to be one. You know, Travis Tritt is. He's I know he is. Player, so yeah. We yeah. got some over in that business. <laughs> He's hiding out. Well, I know, you know, there's there's been talk of of Garth doing a bluegrass album. I've, I've I, heard wish that I wish he would. Because I've heard it, you know. Larry's going to write all the songs for Larry, it. Yeah, it's going to be it's uh, going to be Garth Sings, Larry Cordell. That's what it's going to be called. I don't and know about that. What is it? Something Lucy? Hot <laughs> Lucy. Hot Lucy. It's alter ego. Yeah. <laughs> Chris and Hot Lucy. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you, got I, new, you got a new project coming right. out too, right? I do. It's um, we just had a number one single off of it. It's called uh, "Breaking on the Jimmy Ridge," which anybody from Blaine, Kentucky, will know exactly what that is. There's like seven of them. You know, so, <laughs> uh, and uh, the, the title of the album is called "Where the Trees Know My Name," which is another song that I wrote with Leslie Satcher. It's on the record, and. Um, Hey, boys, I'm going to do this as long as the good Lord lets me be able. I'm going to be sitting there listening, I'll yeah. tell you that much. I can't wait for this new album to come out. And uh, Well, we're excited about it. Um, you know, it's uh, I had the 2018 records. Well, actually, the last, this will be the third one in consecutive years. I'm surprised I could uh, get that many <laughs> that, that quick, you know, but... Uh, and of course, you know the gospel CD we got nominated for a Grammy on. We were thankful great. for that, you yeah. know. And, Very great. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm I couldn't be happier in yeah. my life. You know? well, we appreciate. Well, it. I, I have I'm a new you... granddaughter. You well, that's even better. Be, you cannot be better than that. Jensen <laughs> <laughs> Christine. Those, but... well, that's awesome. She's Very dandy. cool. Well, I am so glad that you were able to come and be here. And I'm serious. When I was glad you took my call. And not only that, but agreed to come and do this with us. We're going to get Larry to do some more songs. Um, and then we're going to crash his party. Yeah, and then we're going to crash your party. Me and Jeremy are going to join you on. All right, one, so. boys. I'm I was hoping you, I'm hoping you all do that. We're going to do a hot Lucy tune. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we can do that or not. <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back with more Larry Cordell. If you're looking for an acoustic instrument, the Acoustic Shop is the place you want to go. The Acoustic Shop, uh, we've been open about four years now and uh, have been nominated top 100 uh, dealer at NAMM Show uh, for two years now. At the Acoustic Shop, we mainly focus on acoustic music instruments and the accessories that go with them. Guitars, mandolins, banjos, basses, and accessories and the, the lessons and repairs that go along with those. It's uh, something that we've been passionate about for the last uh, 
28 years of our lives playing in a family band growing up. Then we opened a all acoustic music store in uh, Missouri to help fill the needs of people that are more focused on just that niche of the genre. With us having all those years on the road, it's really helped us to find the right instrument for the right person. When somebody calls us or comes into the shop, we can actually talk to them and know exactly what kind of instrument would be the best fit for them. And I think that's just something that we bring that a lot of people can't. Started out teaching lessons before we even opened the shop. So that is something that has been a passion of ours for the last 15 years. I believe we've said this is where the pros teach and I truly believe this is where the pros teach. At the Acoustic Shop, this isn't just what we do, this is who we are. So if you're wanting to learn how to play the banjo, the fiddle, the mandolin, guitar, the Acoustic Shop's the place for you. Rob Butler was a weatherman, but he wasn't on TV. He knew if it was gonna rain, all the signs he seen. Well, he knew it meant wet weather when he heard the tree frog sing. What it meant when the southern moon had a golden ring. Well, the farmers came from miles around when it got hot and dry. Hoping for some good news when he looked up in the sky. He'd look up at a big black cloud from the Carter County Bridge. He said, I'm afraid it's bad news, boy. She's breaking on the Jimmy Ridge. She's breaking on the Jimmy Ridge, boy. breaking on the Jimmy Ridge. There'll be no rain here today. She's breaking on the Jimmy Ridge. Days there's satellites and Doppler radar screens, and some dude with a PhD to tell you what it means. But despite their education and tools of the trade, they still don't know it's get it right when they say it's a going to rain. She'd a breaking on the Jimmy Ridge, boys breaking on the Jimmy Ridge. There'll be no rain here today. She's breaking on the Jimmy Ridge. Breaking on the Jimmy Ridge, boy, breaking on the Jimmy Ridge. There'll be no rain here today. She's breaking on the Jimmy Ridge. Making a historic splash in 2020, Silver Dollar City's Diamond Jubilee. Packed with things to ride, do, see, and taste, all while honoring a rich past. Join a town in celebration, home to a new barbecue restaurant and the new raft adventure, Mystic River Falls. Plus, additions to festivals all season long. We invite you to be part of our Diamond Jubilee. Your greatest adventures lie ahead. My first guitar was a loner An old old friend, my cousin, let me keep Back when I was learning how to play Like the boys in Tennessee I'd sit up every night and pick it Till my fingers turned green And I learned how to make her talk on them black dime strings. Well, my daddy showed me three chords, but Jimmy still taught me how to play. And he showed me the G run I'm still using today. I thought it surely must be magic the way he made it ring. But he said it ain't no secret, son. Why, it's these black dime strings. Well, I don't know if they still make them. Back then they were the best. Had a good time, didn't cost much. 
295-6 Back before I left Fay Alley To chase my hillbilly dreams All it took to make me happy Was an old guitar Black diamond string But if I could do it all again, Lord, I know just what I do. Cause if I could have just one wish, I'd take a trip back in a time machine to the day I learned to play the wild foot flower on black diamond string. Well, I don't know if they still make them. Back then they were the best And a good time didn't cost much Two ninety-five a cent Back before I left Bay To chase my hillbilly dreams All it took to make me happy was an old guitar Black diamond Back before I left Fay To chase my make it big dreams All it took to make me happy Was this old box and black dime string <laughs> Well there you have it Larry Cordell, the mighty chord He's just great. I Super. mean, like any. The best part is, like you said, written such great songs. A lot of them are the great story songs that just get your heart. And then you listen to him do them, and when he performs them, you know the emotion that was meant to be wow. in those songs. It's always about his emotion. So I, I wish we that. could like be in one of the rooms when they're doing that magic and putting together these songs. It's just it's wow. Pretty impressive. Yeah. How do they do it? I can't. And Singer. then we got more footage right online. Down. We kind of clipped that down from our live episode we did. At uh, Spigma in Nashville, Music, uh, yeah, Music City, <laughs> USA. And He's got to make sure you know that. We got more of that online at, on our YouTube channel and our Facebook channel, yep. the Ozark Music Shop. Like check those and subscribe. Absolutely. And search for Larry. You can also like check out social. our lead sponsor, Silver Dollar City. We yes. have enjoyed working with them. We were planning a whole bunch more, and we will be doing more because they are great. Yes. And we want They're, you guys to check them out. We would definitely want to make sure you guys are supporting them because they support us. Uh, they help us bring this show to you every week. They're one and the same. Support us. Support them. We'll support you. And huh, we'll all be supported. Like we're all tied together with a cord. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, and while you're at it, check out our new concert series. Uh, That's right. Music Can't Be Quarantined. Hashtag Music Can't Be where we're bringing in some great acts that you can support uh, through this COVID-19 situation with our losing money. So check that out also on our YouTube and Facebook pages. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. I'll be here. Episode. One of these three chairs are going to be me. Yes. Right, we'll you, you guys will probably be chair. here too. No, I'll be on one of the chairs. Duh. <laughs> Can't be a chair. Anyway. Can't be a court either. Can't do it. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Closed captioning and other considerations provided